What if I told you the same algorithms behind those AI image generators? Yeah, the ones making those crazy realistic cats. Well, they're basically running evolution in reverse. Stick with me on this one. Today, we're diving into a research paper. It connects AI image generation and, get this, evolution. Like Darwin, survival of the fittest, the whole shebang. The paper's called Diffusion Models Are Evolutionary Algorithms. Mm. It's by Zhang, Hartle, Hazan, and Levin. And they make a pretty wild argument. They suggest evolution, which we usually think of in a biological sense. Well, it could also be seen as a generative process, kind of like those AI models that are creating those mind-blowing pictures online. That's right. Think of it this way. Evolution takes simple things, like random genetic mutations, and after, you know, countless generations, it turns them into something incredibly complex, like a whole ecosystem of perfectly adapted creatures. So it's like nature's taking a giant jumbled jigsaw puzzle. And then over time, putting all the pieces together to make a masterpiece. That's a great analogy. And just like Odolution, generative AI models try to do the same thing. They take simple data, often random noise, and transform into something meaningful, like a stunning image of a place that doesn't even exist. Okay, so there's a parallel there. But this paper goes way beyond just saying, hey, evolution and AI are kind of similar. Huh. They're saying a specific type of AI, diffusion models actually mirrors evolution in a very literal way. So tell me more about this diffusion model. So imagine taking a picture and adding noise, like static on an old TV screen until the picture is completely obscured. Diffusion models work by reversing that process. They learn how to bring back the original picture from just the noise. Right, like those videos where it looks like someone hit rewind on a bunch of static and then an image slowly appears. Exactly. Now imagine applying that same rewind concept to evolution. What if we could run evolution backward? Instead of life becoming more complex over time, you're saying it becomes simpler. Precisely. Imagine a world where diverse species slowly dissolve back into a random mix of genetic material. This reverse evolution would look a lot like the denoising process we see in diffusion models. In fact, the paper even has a diagram, figure one, that shows this visually. Whoa, I'm looking at it now and this is really making me think. So are they suggesting the math behind these AI image generators could actually help us understand evolution in a totally new way? That's the million dollar question. And it gets even more interesting. The authors introduce a new algorithm called diffusion evolution. It builds on this connection between diffusion models and evolution. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. Tell me more about diffusion evolution. So diffusion evolution takes the principles of these diffusion models and applies them to solving all kinds of problems. Think of problems where you have to find the absolute best solution out of a ton of possibilities. So how does this diffusion evolution actually work? Does it use neural networks like those other AI systems? It's surprising, but it doesn't rely on neural networks. Instead, it uses a clever math trick based on Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem. For those of us who haven't cracked open a statistics textbook lately, could you break that down a bit? Okay. Imagine a detective using clues to narrow down suspects. Bayes' theorem is like a detective's logic. It helps them use new evidence to update their beliefs about who's most likely to be guilty. In a similar way, diffusion evolution uses Bayes' theorem to efficiently zero in on the best solutions to a problem. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So instead of blindly searching for the best solution, diffusion evolution has a strategy. Like that detective with their clues. Exactly. It's not just stumbling around in the dark. It has a more calculated approach to finding the best solution. This is fascinating. Tell me more about how diffusion evolution finds these solutions. Imagine a landscape with mountains and valleys. The higher the mountain, the worse the solution. The lower the valley, the better the solution. We call this the fitness landscape. Got it. So how does diffusion evolution navigate that landscape? Instead of randomly searching for the lowest valley, it starts with a cloud of possibilities spread across the entire landscape. Then, using Bayes' theorem, it refines those possibilities over time, pulling the cloud down towards the best solutions. So it's like this diffusion evolution has a map and a flashlight, while other methods are just bumping around in the dark. That's a great way to put it. And figure two in the paper actually illustrates this. It shows how diffusion evolution explores a two-peaked fitness landscape and ultimately finds both optimal solutions. Other algorithms might only find one of the best solutions, but diffusion evolution is designed to find them all. So it's thorough, which is impressive. Yeah. But does it actually work better than other methods out there? That's the exciting part. It does. They tested diffusion evolution against some leading algorithms, and they found that it often outperformed them. 
particularly when finding a variety of diverse solutions. Diverse solutions, what do you mean by that? It means finding multiple equally good answers to the same problem. They measured this using something called Shannon entropy. It basically quantifies how spread out the solutions are. So it's not just about finding a solution. It's about finding the best kind of solution. Right. One with options. That's Got pretty it. cool. And they have the data to back it up. Right? Exactly. Table one in the paper shows diffusion evolution consistently achieving higher entropy scores than other algorithms, meaning it finds a wider range of solutions, especially for those tricky problems with multiple good answers. That's really interesting, especially since so many problems do have more than one right answer. And having options is never a bad thing. But I have to ask. What makes diffusion evolution so much better at finding these diverse solutions? What's its secret sauce? Well, it's not really a secret sauce per se, more like a really clever strategy. Remember those techniques for speeding up and improving diffusion models we talked about earlier, like accelerated sampling? Well, the authors found those same techniques can be applied to diffusion evolution, making it even more efficient. So they're taking what already works well in AI image generation sure. and using it to boost this new algorithm. That's smart. Can you give me an example of how they used accelerated sampling to make diffusion evolution even better? Absolutely. They used it to train a neural network to control a cart pull system, which is a classic reinforcement learning problem. Imagine trying to balance a pole upright on a moving cart. It's harder than it looks. Oh, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. It seems like one of those simple physics demos that's always way more complicated in practice. How did diffusion evolution do? Well, at first, directly <laughs> applying diffusion evolution to the cart pull problem didn't work as well as they hoped. But then they got creative, and they used a technique inspired by something called latent space diffusion models. And that's when things got really interesting. Latent space. Mm. Now, that sounds complicated. Can you break that down for me? What is latent space? Think of it like this. Imagine a giant library with millions of books, all organized randomly. It would take forever to find anything, right? That's where a cataloging system comes in. It helps you organize and represent all those books in a more manageable way. Latent space is like a cataloging system for complex data. It makes it easier for AI to work with. So instead of dealing with a huge, messy data set, latent space helps organize it in a way that makes more sense. Exactly, and that's what latent space diffusion models do. They find a way to represent complex data, like those cart pole configurations, in a lower dimensional space which makes it much faster and easier to find good solutions. So they use this latent space idea to help diffusion evolution solve the cart pull problem. How did that work out? It turned out to be incredibly effective. By combining diffusion evolution with this latent space approach, they were able to significantly improve its performance, even when dealing with a neural network with over 17,000 parameters. 17,000, that's a lot of parameters. It sounds like they were able to take this idea inspired by AI image generation yeah. and use it to train a totally different AI to solve a classic control problem. That's really impressive. It is, and it really highlights how these seemingly different areas of AI can benefit from each other. This is blowing my mind. We started with AI generating cool pictures of cats. And now we're talking about algorithms that can learn to control complex systems. But what does this all actually mean? What are the bigger implications of this connection between diffusion models and evolution? That's the exciting part. It could change the way we solve problems in areas far beyond AI. If we can view evolution as a kind of diffusion process, like this paper suggests, we might be able to use similar techniques to design better algorithms for everything from drug discovery to material science. Whoa, seriously. Mm -hmm. So this isn't just about AI getting better at generating pictures or playing games. It could have a real impact on how we solve real world problems. That's huge. It really is. Take drug discovery, for example. A huge part of that process is about designing molecules with very specific properties. These molecules are incredibly complex, with thousands of atoms arranged in intricate 3D structures. So designing a new drug is kind of like navigating that complex landscape you mentioned earlier with mountains and valleys. Only this time we're talking about molecules instead of solutions. Exactly. We can think of all the possible drug molecules as points in a giant high dimensional space. Now imagine using a diffusion inspired algorithm to search that space, looking for molecules with the exact properties we need to target a specific disease. It's like using AI to help us evolve new drugs. Precisely. And the best part is, it's not just science fiction. There are already companies using diffusion models to speed up drug discovery with really promising results. That's amazing. It seems like every time we talk about this, it just gets more and more impressive. What other areas could benefit from this kind of thinking? Another area with huge potential is material science. 
just like with drug discovery. A lot of materials, science is about finding materials with specific properties, whether it's strength, conductivity, or heat resistance. So could we use these diffusion algorithms to design things like better solar panels, more efficient batteries, or even new types of super strong alloys. Exactly. We could represent materials as points in a high dimensional space based on their properties, then use these diffusion algorithms to find new and improved materials with unprecedented capabilities. It's incredible to think that these same algorithms that can create photorealistic images could also help us unlock new discoveries at the atomic level. Mm -hmm. It's like having a microscope and a telescope all in one, but and it might be a big but, does mimicking evolution and AI actually bring us any closer to understanding how evolution itself really works? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've seen how powerful these algorithms can be, but can they really unravel the mysteries of evolution itself? It's a question the authors of this paper were definitely grappling with. They actually dedicate a whole section to discussing this. How this connection between AI and evolution could revolutionize our understanding of, well, you know, how life itself changes and adapts. So what kind of evolutionary mysteries could these AI models help us solve? One of the biggest mysteries is how novelty arises in evolution. How do you go from simple, single-celled organisms to the incredible diversity of life we see on Earth today? How did things like eyes, wings, or even brains come to be? Yeah, it's like those things just magically appeared one day. We know evolution happens gradually. Yeah. But how do those big leaps forward happen? That's the million-dollar question. And while we understand the mechanisms of evolution pretty well, things like natural selection and genetic mutation, we don't fully get how these processes lead to such amazing innovations in life. So you're saying these AI models might be able to fill in some of the blanks. How so? Remember how we talked about diffusion models being able to search those complex, high-dimensional spaces? Well, think about the space of all possible biological designs. Each point in that space represents a different organism with its own unique genes and traits. So it's like a giant library of every living thing that could ever exist, even the ones that never will. You got it. Evolution, in a way, is like a search algorithm, trying to find the best designs in that library, mm -hmm. the ones that are best suited for survival in a given environment. So could we use these diffusion models to simulate evolution? It'd be like running our own supercharged version of that famous Darwin Finch experiment, but with AI instead of real birds. That's one way to do it. Imagine creating a virtual world with certain rules and then setting loose a diffusion-based algorithm to evolve digital organisms. We could observe how different conditions lead to new adaptations right in front of our eyes. We could practically have a time machine for evolution. We could rewind the clock, change some variables, and watch how life might have unfolded under different circumstances. That's incredible. It is a powerful concept, and we wouldn't just be limited to replicating the past. We could also explore hypothetical scenarios, like how a new species might impact an existing ecosystem, or the effects of climate change on the evolution of different organisms. It's like we're going from just observing evolution to actively participating in it. That's both exciting and a little bit scary, don't you think? It definitely blurs the lines. But it's important to remember these are just tools. We're still bound by the laws of physics and the ethics of scientific inquiry. It's up to us to use these tools responsibly as we explore these new frontiers. Absolutely. But if we use these tools wisely, who knows what we might discover? It feels like we're on the verge of a new era in scientific exploration where the line between the digital world and the biological world is starting to disappear. And it all started with AI generating images of cats. Who would have guessed? Sometimes the biggest discoveries come from the most unexpected places. Well, folks, there you have it. We took a deep dive into the mind-blowing connection between AI and evolution. We explored the mechanics of diffusion models, their potential to change fields like medicine and material science, and the profound implications they hold for understanding the very essence of life itself. It's an incredibly exciting time to be following these advancements. If you're as intrigued by all of this as we are, be sure to check out the original research paper, Diffusion Models Are Evolutionary Algorithms, by Zhang, Hartel, Hazan, and Levin. You'll find a link in the show notes. And who knows? Maybe our conversation today will inspire some of you listening to make groundbreaking discoveries of your own. Until next time, keep those brain cells firing. And thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.